home of the three piece combos is pugilism company it's your boy reed the black burnt sugar hey man i'm still excited about that naoa and no first round ko this morning man he put it down well put hands all on jamie mcdonald took him out in a minute 52 seconds of the first not long after the bout in OE made it known that he will be participating in the world boxing super series the wbss they're having a bantamweight tournament uh they'll put the schedule together in july and the fights will be starting in september among those participating will be the newly crowned WBA champ, Naoa Inoue, 16 and 0, 14 KOs. Uh, WBA super champ, here we go with all this bullshit, super champs, interim champs, champs in recess. Anyway, WBA super champ, Ryan Burnett, will also be in it. He's 19 and 0, 9 KOs. WBO champ at Bantamweight, Zolani Tetti. He's 27 and 3 with 21 KOs. We'll also have IBF bantamweight champion Emmanuel Rodriguez, 18 and 0, 12 KOs. Those are some heavy hitters, man. The WBC bantamweight title is currently vacant. Uh, I'm sure there'll be two combatants vying for that one as well. Hopefully, they can squeeze into this tournament. Hey, man, at Pugilism, we cover boxing the full spectrum. Heavyweights to damn straw weights, male and female. We don't discriminate. You can be from Japan. You can be from Austin to Boston, from Maine to Spain. We covering it all. This uh, World Boxing Super Series, it'll be the perfect vehicle to launch a fighter of Inoue's talent onto the worldwide stage. This will be like the Super Six was. Remember the Super Six Super Middleweight Tournament? And how that uh, catapulted Andre Ward's career. The tournament had Ward, it had Andre Durrell, it had Carl Frotch, Michael Kessler, Arthur Abraham. I mean, it was a who's who of the top super middleweights of that day. And Andre Ward came out on top, and he became the man henceforth. I see this tournament, this World Boxing Super Series Bantamweight tournament, doing exactly the same thing. For Mr. Naoa, Monster Inoue Time will tell But we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on that one man Hopefully it's televised too I'm going to be in and out you In your out you That's how we do Let's read Black Burp Sugar BBS BBS I really don't like getting political But everybody's dropping their two cents So I'm going to drop mine Donald Trump pardons Jack Johnson posthumously uh, due to the Man Act which forbid forbode men of color from transporting white women across state lines Jack Johnson the first black heavyweight champion ever served nearly a year in federal prison for this just for transporting white women across state lines now I told y'all a couple podcasts ago how Jack Johnson was so gangster with it when the cops would pull him over and write him a ticket, he would pay them twice the amount because his logic was, I'm coming back the same path with another white woman and don't bother stopping me next time. I done paid you double for it. But yeah, he had to sit uh, He had to sit nearly a year just for transporting, willingly transporting white women across state lines. Here's my problem. I don't mind the part, and obviously it was an injustice. Presidents way before Trump should have... They should have been pardoned Jack Johnson for this. Like, it's it's stupid. It's been a black eye on our country for the longest time. So, Sylvester Stallone is the one that brought this oversight to Trump's attention. Sly claims to not be affiliated with any political party. Yet, he openly supported John McCain in 2008 when McCain ran against Barack Obama. And as recent as 2016, Sly Stallone was quoted as saying, I love Trump. Look, man, I love Rocky. Seen every Rocky movie 157 times each. I seen Creed, which I like. I've supported Sylvester Stallone with my money. The Rambo flicks, the uh, 
the latest one with the old dudes, all the old action heroes. I forget the name of it, but any movie he's made, I pretty much support it. But this is all just a smoke screen, man. He's rightfully in the Boxing Hall of Fame for his contributions to boxing. And because it's Rocky, because it's Sly Stallone, it's easy for him to get boxing dignitaries like a Lennox Lewis, like a Deontay Wilder to attend such an event. But it's all a smoke It's a smoke screen, y'all. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Eddie Murphy told us that in Beverly Hills Cop many years ago. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. This is what Donald Trump does. Whenever shit is getting heated, whenever he's getting that negative press, he throws out a smoke screen to, to divert attention away. All the while, there's a peace summit that's been canceled with North Korea and their leader, Kim Jong-un. From the moment Trump was looking like he was going to take office, him and Kim Jong-un have been at odds to the point where they've talked about war, like warring with each other, going to war, the U.S. versus North Korea. So they were planning this peace summit to squash it out. Well, Trump, he canceled it, stating tremendous anger and open hostility from North Korea, which is exactly the type of shit Trump gives off to anyone he encounters. Trump is the quintessential big, bad American bully. And these days, other countries just ain't having it. They're not afraid of the U.S. or Trump's threats. Anyway, that's that's part of why he's all of a sudden pardoning Jack Johnson. Another reason is Trump's bae, his boo thing, Miss Stormy Daniels, that porn star that his lawyer was giving hush money to. As each day passes, we learn more and more about that, how he's basically been taking care of this girl, giving her hush money. Again, it's all a smokescreen, y'all. It's no different than last fall when Trump was getting bad press for his involvement with Russia and the pending investigation into his ties with Russia. All of a sudden, Trump's in front of a bunch of rednecks in Alabama and he attacked the NFL. And that immediately became the story, drawing all the headlines, drawing all the negative press away from Trump's involvement with Russia. It's a smokescreen, y'all. Do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I saw a beautiful quote from a Democratic political consultant named Stephanie Brown James, which perfectly summed this shit up for me. This isolated is a good gesture to right a miscarriage of justice, said Stephanie Brown James, a Democratic political consultant. However, there are a lot of current modern day issues that he could address as the living president that he chooses not to. I'm just personally tired of symbolism. Well said, sister. Well said. I'm tired of symbolism. I'm tired of bananas in the tailpipe. I'm glad Jack Johnson got pardoned. Should have been happy, though. I'm not falling for the bullshit. And I hope y'all aren't either, y'all. That's it. I don't get on my political soapbox much. I apologize if I took this uh, particular podcast a different direction. I just had to speak on that, man. I'm, I'm not with that. Anyways, uh, we're going to get in and out, y'all. Another day, another podcast. This is Reed, the Black Burt Sugar. Till next time, peace and God bless.